The helicopters caused a leap forward in the concept of amphibious assault operations. The title of being the first ship designed and commissioned according to this revolutionary concept belongs to the Iwo Jima class. The USA used seven ships of this class successfully in many important operations between 1961 and 2002. Now, we're investigating the Iwo Jima class, a true amphibious assault ship legend. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. The Iwo Jima class landing platform helicopters, shortly LPH, were the first amphibious assault ships designed and built as dedicated helicopter carriers. However, it was not easy for the USA to decide to use such type of ship. Since the Second World War, military planners had been aware that helicopters offer great opportunities. However, they didn't know exactly how to use them effectively. Studies were progressing slowly. Because, with the end of the Second World War, the USA had been in an optimistic mood and was not expecting a new major conventional war. Washington believed that it could resolve all disputes with the advantage of being the only owner of the atomic bomb. Nevertheless, the US Marine Corps made significant trials about helicopters in the second half of the 1940s. On May 1, 1948, five HO-3S-1 helicopters took off from the aircraft carrier USS Palau and transported 66 Marines and their necessary equipment to land. The four-seat HO-3S-1s had to do 35 flights for this job. This exercise, called Operation Packer 2, proved that the helicopters are highly useful for the amphibious assault vehicles. The Marines called this type of operation as vertical envelopment instead of air mobility or air assault. However, even the success was not enough for the Pentagon to be interested in this new concept. But two years later, because of the Korean War, the US generals faced the truth. The atomic bomb couldn't prevent the outbreak of a major conventional war. Besides, it was not possible to use this weapon under all conditions. On September 13, 1951, the US Marine Corps used the helicopters to supply its battalion with 8,550 kilograms of supplies and evacuate 74 wounded troops. Throughout the war, the helicopters had proven over and over again how effective they were. Thus, the USA decided to convert the former escort carrier, USS Thetis Bay, to helicopter carrier in 1955. After a while, however, converted aircraft carriers proved to be inefficient for the job. So, in 1958, the USA approved the construction of the Iwo Jima class LPHs, designed delicately for this mission. The first ship of the class, USS Iwo Jima, was laid down in 1959, launched in 1960, and commissioned in 1961. To increase the internal volume and to reduce the costs, the hull was preferred similar to a commercial ship with large width and pre-board. At the earliest stage of the design, the ship had a fin stabilizer, however, it was abandoned to cut costs. Although the sacrifice saved the money, it caused significant problems. The seakeeping ability of the Iwo Jima class was low. Many crew members were suffering from seasickness when the sea conditions deteriorated even a little. To crown it all, the propulsion system was causing strong vibrations over the speed of 21 knots. Even some compartments of the ship were becoming almost inhabitable because of this. Originally, the ship was planned to have two shafts propulsion system. However, again, to save money, the number of shafts was reduced to one. The ship had a 70 meter long hangar. The flight deck was 183.7 meters long and 33.7 meters wide. Up to seven helicopters could operate at the same time. Naturally, over the years, different types of helicopters had been deployed on the Iwo Jima class LPHs. In their last years, they normally carried an air group consisted of 4 CH-53, 10 CH-46, 2 UH-1, and 6 AH-1 helicopters. In some missions, up to 4 AV-8 Harriers were also temporarily being stationed on board. 
the elevators of USS Iwo Jima, USS Okinawa, USS New Orleans, and USS Incheon had a capacity of 23.32 tons. Elevators with a capacity of 19.6 tons were preferred in the other two ships. These elevators were foldable for passage of the Panama Canal. Also, there were two small ammunition elevators with the capacity of 7 tons. Although the Iwo Jima class was designed purely for vertical envelopment operations, it also carried two landing craft personnel large. These LPHs had the operating room, x-ray room, hospital ward, isolation ward, laboratory, pharmacy, dental room, and medical storeroom. Their medical facilities had 155 bed capacity. The complement was 902 person. The Iwo Jima class could carry 2,090 marines. They had a length of nearly 184 meters, a beam of 32 meters, and a draught of 10 meters. Fully loaded displacement of these ships was about 18,800 tons. Two 600 psi Babcock and Wilcox boilers and one De Laval General Electric Westinghouse turbine produced 23,000 horsepower. The maximum speed was 23 knots. The ship can reach the range of 18,520 kilometers with the economical speed of 20 knots. The Iwo Jima class could carry 20 CH-46 Sea Knights or 11 CH-53 Stallion helicopters. When commissioned, each vessel had four 76mm twin-barrel guns. Before they were decommissioned, these guns were reduced to two. From the beginning of the 1970s, the Iwo Jima class ships were equipped with two Octopole RIM-7 Sea Sparrow air defense missile launchers. In the 1980s, two Phalanx closing weapon systems were also installed. These LPHs had the AN SPS 65 air search, AN SPS 40E air surface search, AN SPS 67V1 surface search, AN SPS 64V9 navigation, SPN 35A and SPN 43B carrier controlled approach, and Mark 115 fire control radars. As soon as Iwo Jima class LPHs commissioned, they began the part in the major USA operations. USS Iwo Jima and USS Okinawa of this class were in the Caribbean during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 for the possible invasion of the island. These ships played an active role in the Vietnam War. In 1965, USS Iwo Jima joined the Operation Starlight in Vietnam. During the operation, the H-34 helicopters of VMM-163 Squadron took off from the ship and conducted many search and destroy raids. She had supported more than 20 search and destroy operations until the late 1966. Also, evacuation and surgical teams of USS Iwo Jima saved the lives of many wounded US troops. In 1967, off the coast of Vietnam, USS Okinawa, deployed as a mobile base, performed many important vertical envelope operations. During the war, the busiest ship of its class was the USS Tripoli. She served on three tours in Vietnam. The USS Tripoli had participated in eight amphibious operations in her first tour alone. USS Okinawa was there in the final phase that ended the war. She participated in Operation Eagle Pole, the evacuation of Phnom Penh, Cambodia, as well as Operation Frequent Wind, the evacuation of Saigon, Vietnam, and saved many lives. While her sisters fought in Vietnam, USS Guam was busy with another important task. The Pentagon had approved to test the sea control ship concept of Admiral Almo Zumwalt. The concept was including to use the small escort aircraft carriers providing air support for convoys. Thus, in case of war, the US Navy could have used its super carriers against Soviet Navy instead of convoy escort duty. USS Guam was the test platform of the concept. In 1972, the ship began extensive trials with AV-8A Harrier fighters and Sea King anti-submarine warfare helicopters. Yet the Pentagon didn't find the concept feasible and USS Guam went back to her old job. In 1982, 
USS Tripoli was the test platform for the XV-15 experimental tilt rotor aircraft. This trial was the important step that paved the way for V-22 Osprey. In the early 1980s, first USS Guam and later USS Iwo Jima operated off the Lebanese coast. Their Marines disembarked to take position around Beirut International Airport. But this US mission tragically ended on October 23, 1983, when an attack on the Marines barracks caused the loss of 241 US servicemen's lives and wounded a further 60. USS Guam served as a flagship for Operation Urgent Fury in the invasion of Granada. In 1984, the tanker war started as a new phase of the Iran-Iraq war. After a while, this endangered the oil shipment to the Western world through the Persian Gulf. So, in 1987, the USA started Operation Earnswell to provide military protection of Kuwaiti-owned tankers from Iranian attacks. As a part of this operation, in 1987, USS Guadalcanal was leading mine-sweeping operations in the Persian Gulf. On September 21, 1987, the helicopters of USS Jared Frigate reported that the Iranian ship Iran Azure was laying mines in the shipping lines. The US Navy SEALs disembarked from the helicopters of USS Guadalcanal, attacked, boarded, and captured the ship. Five days later, they scuttled Iran Azure in international waters. While the Iwo Jima class ships carried out important missions during the 1991 Gulf War, they also faced some critical misfortunes. For example, as a part of the build-up for Operation Desert Shield, the US Navy had deployed USS Iwo Jima in the Persian Gulf in October 1990. The ship developed a leak in the steam valve which supplied the steam to an auxiliary electrical generator. For repairment, she docked in Bahrain. Soon after, USS Iwo Jima left the port to rejoin the fleet. However, due to the conditions of the war, the repairment finished prematurely without necessary inspections. The valve began to leak again and caused a lethal accident. During the war, as the flagship for mine countermeasures operations, USS Tripoli was serving in the northern Persian Gulf. On February 18, 1991, she hit an Iraqi naval mine on her starboard bow. The explosion ripped about 5 by 6 meters hole in the hull. The crew managed to stabilize the ship after 20 hours of work, but USS Tripoli couldn't resume her duty. She docked in Bahrain. After 30 days of repairs, the ship returned to the Persian Gulf to continue mine sweeping operation. USS Guam and other Iwo Jima class ships stationed in the region while the Gulf War continued was urgently sent to Somalia after the rebels entered the capital Mogadishu. Along with the USS Trenton, she evacuated 282 people in total, including ambassadors of the USA, as well as Germany, Kuwait, Nigeria, Oman, Qatar, Sudan, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, the UK and the USSR. On December 3, 1992, USS Tripoli conducted the first landing operation of Operation Restore Hope in Somalia and her Marines secured the airport and seaports in Mogadishu. The Iwo Jima class had also played important roles in the US space rocket programs. These ships recovered many astronauts landing in the sea before the space shuttles. For example, in 1970, USS Iwo Jima was the flagship of Task Force 130 that waited for the famous Apollo 13 spaceship's astronauts. According to an article published in 2012 by USNI News, the Reagan administration offered the USS Iwo Jima to the British government in case HMS Hermes and HMS Invincible had been out of the war during the 1982 Falklands War. In 1992, USS Okinawa became the first decommissioned ship of the class. The last Iwo Jima class LPH, USS Incheon, was decommissioned 10 years later. USS Guam, USS Okinawa, USS Incheon, USS Guadalcanal, and USS New Orleans were sunk as target ships in 2001, 2002, 2004, 2005, and 2010 respectively. 
For more than 40 years, Iwo Jima class ships had undertaken important roles in protecting the US overseas interests. They played a leading role in accepting the helicopters as a natural part of amphibious assault operations and became the reliable floating basis of the US Marine Corps. Thus, the Iwo Jima class deserved to become an unforgettable legend. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button.